Welcome to another episode of Meet You at the Top podcast. Guys, if you love watching and listening to our show, please do like, share, and subscribe. It would really mean the world to us. (laughs) You know what time it is. Meet You at the Top podcast with your hosts, Meg Dabolsky and... Elfie Balambo. Today, we are answering all of your little invasive, nosy little questions. <laughs> so we have posted on Not Gonna Lie. It's an app where you guys can ask us anonymous questions. Myself and Maja posted on our Instagrams, and we got tons of questions, okay? Tons. Let me show you guys. These are just my questions. We did choose a random assortment. Yeah. And we'll be asking five from each side. So let's get right to it. Okay. Elfie, I will start with you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, Alfie, <laughs> Alfie, what is your biggest insecurity? I would definitely say I'm really confused when it comes to like what I want my body to look like. Mm. So not that I'm insecure about my body because like I feel like I look great. But when it comes to my weight, sometimes I'm confused. Like, do I want to be 140 pounds? Do I want to be 150 pounds? Do I want to be 130? Like, it's a bit confusing for me. Like I, my body goals always change. So I, yeah. mean, I guess I would say that. And why do you think that is? Do you think there's like any external factors? Instagram, for example. Girl, they say no therapy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. <sighs> but um, I don't know. I just think I just think sometimes like my views change. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I, know. I hear you. Like right now I'm in this season of I want to look super cut. I want to look super shredded. There's a couple projects i'm working on that i'm like i need to be (laughs) cut and and looking like extra you know yeah slim um but then there's season where i'm like i want to be slim thick i want to have a dun 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 (laughs) dun so it just depends on the season but right now i'm definitely feeling like i'm in the season of being cut yeah yeah it's summertime so i feel like a lot of our listeners probably will agree with you on that okay um you asked me magda okay (laughs) someone asked what is your biggest red flags? Ooh, and guys, um, I think just like maybe not being present. You know, yeah. I like communication. I think that's what it comes down to. Okay. So if he's not communicative, like doesn't text at all or like takes three hours to text, it's like, okay, for me, that's a big red flag. Okay. Another one would be um, he doesn't have a good relationship with his parents. Ooh. Yeah, I think that that just kind of foreshadows what your relationship might look like especially with their mom yes and honestly a red flag as well is if a man doesn't want to like provide for his woman you know like okay no i'm not even joking Facts. like if they ask you to move in but they're like oh will you will you be splitting the rent with me like <gasps> that's such a not only a turnoff but it's a red flag because like yeah. how are you supposed to want to build with someone who doesn't want to like work for your relationship yeah, yeah. like I hate to say it, but there's rules in the society and your man should not be looking at you to, you know, pick up the pieces to what he's supposed to be doing. Period. Would you agree? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. A hundred percent. I would rather live alone, pay my own bills than live with you. It's actually- yeah. Like what are we roommates? Yeah, we're not roommates. What's a red flag for you? Red flag for me, I would definitely say is um, someone that hides their personal life like if i don't really know anything about you like you're just so secretive like like oh i'm about to go down the street what's down the street (laughs) you know like there's guys who move very secretive it's like too secretive too secretive and it's like we need to be open transparency if a guy's not transparent with you and it could be the smallest things but the the smallest things lead to bigger things i think lack of transparency and just to add to that i Mm -hmm. think is especially true on social media Mm -hmm. so i know like there's some guys that like they want their privacy but like at least posting your girl once like you should be proud and let other followers know like especially about your girl are you crazy yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) and it's it's just i feel like it opens doors to a lot of shady behaviors because as we know instagram like you get Mm -hmm. those dms and I'm sure it's the same for guys. Yeah. Another huge red flag. If a guy's love bombing me, you already tell me you love me. You just met me. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> Let's get married, Elfie. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's too much. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, when, when a guy, like, I remember I went on a date with a guy and like the second date, he was like, are you going to be my girl? And I'm like, <laughs> it's been two dates. Yeah. You don't even know me. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know, know anything name. about you. Yeah. yeah. So I think like 
100 percent. those are my top three red flags yeah and those things need to be reciprocated i feel like if you both feel it then it's okay but if it's like forced yeah it just feels too creepy there's a difference between like kind of like your story where it's like <laughs> which we didn't haven't talked about yet but <laughs> there's a difference between like moving so fast and in a rush yeah. there's a difference between that and the difference between like we just really connect and, yeah. Like, yeah you are my partner you are my soul and like we're just moving together in alignment yeah but things are going fast there's a difference and yeah. you know which is which yeah you know? i love that you feel it mm-hmm. yeah okay, okay. Ooh, that was good that was good okay elfie mm-hmm. <laughs> i guess this isn't a question but someone asked you would you say yes if i asked you out and not me personally though <laughs> <laughs> um are you over six feet <laughs> um honestly finance is like (laughs) yeah i'm not gonna lie i am very very picky i'm very selective with who i even am seen outside with or who i go on a date with i don't want to waste my time i don't want to waste your time and you know before i used to be like oh maybe like let's just see what happened no there's no seeing what happens at this point i feel like i trust my intuition so much that i know if there's a possibility where something could happen or something can grow I'm only being intentional and um, height is definitely a non-negotiable for me. And yeah. being a Christian man is non-negotiable as well. You don't have to be like super practicing, but you definitely have to like believe, believe in God. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you got to be over six feet for sure. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know it sounds crazy. Like Even for me, I feel like six feet is short in my opinion, but I know on average that is a tall guy. Yeah. So like, can I get at least six? Yeah, I mean, that's not much ask to ask for. I feel yeah. like it's fine to have standards. And if you know you're not going to vibe with someone who's like 5'8", like you said, what's the point of wasting and I'm, time? And this is not me being surface level, but there are some things I feel like yeah. it's okay if you don't want to negotiate on those things. Yeah, well, Sorry. guys have their preferences too. Absolutely. You know? But you could take me out if you got your shit together, if you if um, are six. a good person, if you're a family man. But yeah. Okay. I think I'll see perfect talk about it i'll ask you an actual question okay (laughs) you have so many uh, compliments here oh my god (laughs) so what inspired both of you to start this podcast i'll let you go first oh maybe you want me to answer first yeah you answer okay so i would say we both love like media stuff but i feel like we were going we went to a sushi lunch date and it literally just came to the both of us you know because we're both in our journey of growing in our careers and it just made sense and we just think people are so cap about the journey, about everything. And we both have never been like nine to five. We both worked in HR together. First of all, we finessed it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't sue me. <laughs> but anyways, when we worked together in HR, we were both like texting each other like, this is just not it. Yeah. It's, it's not it. And we both have that drive and that hunger. And, you know, like when you're an entrepreneur, you know if it's for you or not. No matter what we go through, highs, lows, we're always positive we're always in a good mood yes and we just want to inspire people to use their gifts and like people don't even think about like having a voice like being confident those are all gifts that you can use to succeed and we're using it so yeah 100 percent inspired me yeah and i feel like um for myself and i totally agree with you just to add on to that we're so curious about other people's journeys there's such such different niches that we hit on and i think it's super inspiring to like hear those stories where they started from literally nothing sometimes and it's like it makes you feel better in a way and it makes it seem like anything is possible if you really do put the time energy and mind to it right so i love meeting new people i love hearing their stories it just makes me so happy when people succeed and you're right there is a lot of cap especially online Mm -hmm. like you know oh like i made a million my first year but you forgot to mention your daddy's the ceo well you have investment capital to start that can push that revenue right and a lot of us don't have that right so we just wanted to highlight the real truths of what it takes to to get where you want to go absolutely and why not record our own journey have people get to know us because even for myself i can relate so many people judge me just based of how i look or like my instagram or whatever the case is people have misconceptions so it's like here's a chance for you to get to know me yeah you know i'm not my serious side because when it comes to real estate i'm I don't play when it comes to my business yeah. and I can, you know, we can both be very like, you straight know, to the point. straight yeah. to the point. 
um you know we give our clients 110 percent, but this is like you get to see our fun side yeah you know, get to know a little bit more 100 percent, and we love to showcase other people's businesses as well Absolutely. as well as ours we'd love to promote yeah and what better way than a podcast so. okay yeah <laughs> okay mag that mag yes that. Okay, what is what is the most embarrassing situation oh, no. you've ever been in? Um, oh my gosh. You know what? I was in university and I was like a bigger girl, okay? I was like I wanna say like hundred and seventy or hundred and eighty pounds. I know people No way. Yeah, people don't believe it, but this girl was tech. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll never forget, like, I was so self-conscious at that mm-hmm. time. But, you know, I was just focusing on my studies. And I had this uh, seminar. And it was, like, I sort of got, like, 300 seats in the classroom. And I sat in one of the rows. But the way that the chairs were connected, yeah, they were all, like, sitting on, a, like, a metal bar. Mm-hmm. And then they, it was screwed into the floors. I don't know why they did that. But I sat down. And I remember, like, I'm just waiting for the lecture to start. Like, people are obviously filling up. And yeah. um, all of a sudden, I feel, like, my entire chair, like... Oh, my God. Leaning back. And I'm like, what's going on here? Are these, like, reclining? Yeah. <laughs> Did you fall? Yes. Oh, oh my, my God. God. The, everything... The entire row fell back with me. But I was... The people that are sitting there, they, like, kind of clued in. And they stood up before it could fall back. Oh, my God. But I just didn't see. And I literally, like, fell. It was so embarrassing, though. Because oh my gosh. everyone's like, oh, my God, are you okay? But then there's this guy. And I saw him in the corner of my eye. And he's, like, trying not to laugh. Oh, my God. And it made me feel so bad about myself. Because it's like, you know, I'm a bigger girl. Here I am falling in the middle of, like, 250 people yeah. filling up. So that would probably be my most embarrassing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't care now. Yeah. I'd just laugh it off. But like, you know, when you're, you have those phases yeah. where you're, you're not confident because you don't feel like you look your best or mm-hmm. I gained like the freshman 50. <laughs> not even the Relax. 15. <laughs> those uh, cinnamon buns were good. I was eating don't like, I'm not even kidding. It's the, a real the, thing though. Freshman 15. It is. is. A real thing. The food, especially if it's good on campus and trust me, Guelph, I went to University of Guelph. They had some bomb food, and I was not missing any meals, to say the oh, least. <laughs> okay, okay. Wait, so Wait, but what was your most embarrassing situation? I want to know. My most embarrassing situation. Okay, well, okay. She's I'll say the most few. recent one. I went to my friend's event. Oh, my God. <laughs> Should I tell that one? Yes, Okay, I went so to my friend's. It was, I was, like, I was mortified. Like, I was so embarrassed. Yeah. And I'm not telling the story to make my friend feel bad because he did feel really bad about it you afterwards. Feel worse. <laughs> um, but basically, I went to my friend's event and, you know, he's, you know, he's doing really well in his career mm-hmm. and he was speaking on a panel. So I was thinking, like, you know, I'm there to support him. As a friend, I should ask a question when they're, yeah. people are asking questions, no? So I had, I felt like I had asked a very good question. What was the question? The, the question that I had asked is so he works in cinematography and I had asked the question of um, if somebody was working with a small budget what would be the most important things to invest in yes you know which is a great question yeah so I so what the kind of answer I was kind of looking for was like oh like maybe you should invest in your sound or like yeah. I just want to know what's the most important thing because you know we're working on a few projects ourselves yeah um, coming up soon yes um so that's the question question i asked but i don't know if he understood the question but he should not be on a panel okay (laughs) (laughs) we're not coming for him right now okay we love him this is you it's all about you not him (laughs) but um yeah so basically his answer was um if you can google something don't waste somebody's time asking them oh and i was in front of people yeah i was I was like, at first I looked around like, and then <laughs> somebody in the audience was like, yeah, like use your brain. <laughs> I was, I Wait, was, what? I was really like, what's happening? Like I, oh I was God. so embarrassed. Yeah. Like I've never been so embarrassed in my life. I'm not going to lie to you. Like I was so embarrassed yeah, because put on the spot. I felt like it was such a great question. Mm-hmm. And the ant like i was just so embarrassed like yeah. i was literally like i left the event right after like the minute it finished i was gone i didn't mm, even say bye or you're, anything you're better than me i would have left right there <laughs> and then but you know what that's stupid because any question is really googleable now like you can literally google how to do heart 
heart transplant yeah. surgery and it'll tell you so <laughs> if you can't answer questions don't be on a panel but that's just okay. what she says relax no i that's such a, a, a salty answer <laughs> that's so salty that's so embarrassing okay and we're not coming for him but no again yeah. no we're not coming for him but i was literally i was mortified yeah oh, and caught I, you my one hard. thing i would say like my one thing about me like you know this like i do not like being embarrassed like that no. is like, that is my number one like i will end a friendship yes. i will like i will forget who you are if you embarrass me yeah like it is my number one like do not do this yeah this guy must be special then <laughs> he's well, still he's my friend but yeah you said Next. you cut off friendships <laughs> well like well yeah i didn't talk to him after that yeah but yeah, he yeah. like messaged me and like apologized yeah for sure so now we're good yeah but don't um, do it again <laughs> But that was like my, that's like my big, even like, yeah, no, that's and if worse. my man embarrasses me, oh, that's even worse. No. Yeah. Relationship over. <laughs> yeah. Don't embarrass me because, you know. Yeah. I, you don't sit well with that. No. I love that. That's yeah. so good. Okay. Your turn, your turn, your turn. Has there ever been a moment in your life where you had to isolate yourself for a period of time to achieve a task or goal? Mm-hmm. I definitely feel like now. Yeah. Like I've definitely not isolated myself, but I've definitely like. I just feel like I've outgrown a lot of people that were in my circle and I've really just been dedicating my time, like I've mentioned in my other videos, to my relationship with God, to being disciplined, to really focusing on the things that I want to build out for myself and in my life. Um, so yeah, right now is a time of isolation. She my only friend right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If I'm you so watch lucky. this, if you're watching this and I talk to you, don't be offended. Yeah. But like, yeah, I'd I've been really focusing on like making myself the best version. Like my skin is looking yes. good, my body looks good, my mental is yeah. good, my business is good. Like I'm just trying to fill myself. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of people they're like lackadaisical with yeah. what they're doing, and I just think that we have um, similar goals and we share the similar journey. Life is not a joke. No, and a lot of people feel like there's all the time in the world, and there isn't. Mm. So I like hanging out with people who literally like do what i'm doing yeah. which is <laughs> I you agree. i guess yeah but it's true because like we can not only like joke around but we can talk about business while yeah it's like work and play at the same time which Absolutely. that's like that's my style so no i hear you on that yeah so, okay we're in the season of isolation so don't come to me if, if it's not something yeah serious yeah. or important or yeah. something of value yeah don't know? talk to me <laughs> sorry i can't say this i'm just kidding i'm a nice person uh, okay um okay magda are you talking to anyone yeah well i am engaged okay and you see the fat right <laughs> oh my gosh i see now i was like Dude, yeah it's cute you super got some cute. money super nice <laughs> <laughs> no it's He's beautiful <laughs> sorry he's a hard worker but yeah i'm engaged yeah. and like he's my life partner so oh my god i'm never gonna be single again mind you we started the year like we're both single yes and it's crazy it's actually just a testament to when it's your time it's your time yeah you're Her never ready for it like this yeah in yeah. a good way yeah i'm so happy for you my god well you're next Aww. so amen i yes. receive it <laughs> are you single obviously <laughs> we know we know you're single but open <laughs> Yeah. To true potentials yeah 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 i definitely i'm not wasting my time if it's not somebody of you know no. substance value yeah, and you value. know what dating now is super hard like you know, always say thras and i we have like <laughs> we're the same person yeah, it's really hard so like but it's hard to find someone like that that like your interests, your values, your um, beliefs mm-hmm. should be similar because that's what makes relationships last. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why we moved as quickly as we did, which I don't even think it's that quick. We, we're we on our seventh month. So, I mean, for me, <laughs> time flies, okay? But when you know, you know, you don't have to wait. Like, yeah. there's no rules to this. You don't have to wait exactly. years. I know people that dated for 10 years and then... Please don't nothing dis- don't ever disrespect me by dating <laughs> me for 10 years yeah. let alone three yeah no no i dated somebody for three years and 
I, there's no way I would do that yeah. again. Guys Sorry. know. Guys yeah. know fairly quickly. I'm not in a rush, but at the same time, like, to waste another three years no. is insane to me. No. The older you get, I think, like, year tops, like, you should know. Absolutely. What are we doing? Yeah. Are we building our family? Yes. Are we building our lives or are we not? Yeah. And life is much more exciting when you build with someone yeah. versus on your own. So. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Don't worry. Your time's coming. I know. Okay. I'm not worried. So my question for you yes. from the audience, mm -hmm. uh, do you think modern women act too whorish or are they too slutty now? Ugh, sorry, ladies, but mm -hmm. I want to break it, break it down yeah, for you. Yeah, give it the real, real. Honestly, I definitely think that modern women are doing too much. Mm -hmm. I definitely think that modern women are a little bit delusional. Like there's levels to it. You know, yeah. I always I'm a traditional woman with a splash of modern. Yeah. Meaning. You know, I believe in the man being the leader of the relationship. I believe in the man leading the household, providing for you. I believe in catering to your man. I believe in all that. But when I say a splash of modern is no matter how much money you're bringing in, I still want to have my business. I still want to do my own thing. Like, I want to be an active mother, but like, you know, I'll take my kids to practice. And like, while they're practicing, I'm there cheering for them, but I'm also working on my business. Yeah. You know, like, I don't want somebody who's going to tell me don't work at all you know let it be an option that's what i say when i mean splash but there i feel like modern women are taking things to a whole nother level where it's like they're doing certain things where it's like you expect to have a husband but you're not acting like a wife like a wife yeah you know or like you're not dressing like a wife you're mm -hmm. not acting like a wife you're not treating your man like a husband you know like i'm you know i'm yeah. not saying practice being a wife i'm not saying move into the guy and do wifely things without getting the ring i'm not saying that I'm just saying, like, the way you conduct yourself, like, respecting the man, you know, respecting yourself. Yeah. Especially on social media, um, I think it's so important. So, I definitely think that modern women are doing too much. Like, yeah. Like, the whole, like, slut walk. That yeah. whole movement, I don't agree with because I just feel like showing your body is not empowering, in my opinion. Right. That's just my opinion. Um, I definitely think that you need to leave something for your man to be curious about. Like, yeah. if I go on a first date with, with a man... I'm not wearing something that's going to be super revealing because like it sets the tone. Yeah, it sets the know? tone. Exactly. Yeah. And I definitely feel like modesty, it's almost non-existent anymore. And if you want a good husband and you want like that full family life, mm -hmm. you can't say things like, well, this is me. This is how I dress. He better accept me as is and yeah. deal with it because guys will keep looking elsewhere like Absolutely. they're not obligated to give you time i also feel like women in this generation don't prioritize having a good man you attract what you are right so yes. if you're outside and like you know for the streets you're only gonna get street yeah well i always ask women this would you care if your man was always posting like shirtless topless online you're gonna feel some type of way because you know women are looking at that so you kind of have to put yourself in that type of position i mean it's different if you're at the beach and you post a beach photo cute whatever you That's know i different. do that once in a while but like if I'm it's like, like every shots. other post it's like damn yeah and you wouldn't like it if when your man likes half naked photos of women you don't like it right no. so why are you posting those photos for other women to feel like that yeah about those pictures yeah like you're you know? becoming the subject of something you don't like exactly oh my gosh that's a bar yeah. no it's so true like <laughs> so yeah i definitely think modern women are doing too much like we just need to just tone it down tone it down a little bit yeah like the way that i feel sexy is like when my skin looks good yeah. when like my energy is always on point like that's how i feel sexy yeah you know? wearing heels i love to show my legs your yeah. profile is a reflection of you so absolutely at the end of the day yeah oh that's a good question Ooh, okay magda yes who has nicer feet between you and i <laughs> let me see your feet <laughs> <laughs> i feel like okay, you have nice feet my, okay don't look at it today but <laughs> you know pedicure day this oh week. my god <laughs> just kidding but i feel like I don't know. You have really nice feet. They're my okay. feet aren't ugly. My feet are not ugly. They're always pet manicured or yes. what is it called? Pedicured. Always. Like that's yeah. a must. Well I will maintained. never wear open. I, it's my biggest pet peeve. When women wear open toe shoes without getting their feet done, it's like, ma'am, mm -mm. crazy. But you definitely have the nicer feet for sure because your feet are smaller and tiny <laughs> and you got your little foot tattoo. It's cute. Oh my gosh. I regret these feet tattoos to be honest. No, they're cute. But okay, I'll ask you another in. question. Yes one thing you can't survive without coffee really yeah i think every your teeth are so white too 
Yeah, you know what? I was doing some research and teeth are kind of, they're not based on what you're drinking necessarily. It's the actual like color of it is uh, genetic. But you know coffee stains your teeth. So they say. But I've been doing that <laughs> shit. In my, You've also my been doing two lighting sessions. I have. Girl. Yeah, I can't lie. Yes. But I've stopped that, right? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, for now. So every morning you need a coffee. Every morning I need a coffee, yes. But I do have really good dental hygiene. Like, I brush twice a day. Mm-hmm. I floss. Yeah. Um, I visit the dentist uh, one to two times a year, depending. Yeah. So, you know, you just got to maintain it. If you're not flossing, please. <laughs> I can smell Start. that from a mile away. <laughs> No, because, like, food gets stuck in there. Yeah, I know, for sure. Yeah, and I have tight, like, uh, spaces in between my teeth. Yeah, you have beautiful teeth. Thank you. I remember when I met you, I was like, are your teeth real? (laughs) Some people ask me if I have veneers, which is nuts. No, these are 100% real, but shout out to my parents for taking care of that. (laughs) When I was younger with braces. You have great teeth, too, though. Thanks, girl. Yeah, like, they're very... It could be better, but, you know. No, no, I think I love teeth that have character, and I'm not saying yours have... It's Girl, a crazy character. A character. <laughs> but no, they're straight. But I like when like teeth are not so perfect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like I'm definitely the natural gonna get, look. Um what's it called? Invisalign. Invisalign on my bottom teeth. My top teeth are nice, it's just the bottom teeth. Um, like I said, room for improvement. It's you not know? even bad. You can't see the bottom teeth anyways. But you gotta do what makes you happy, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. Question for you. You have the okay. better questions. I love it. You can answer uh, some of them. <laughs> I I will jump in. Okay. Do you think it's bad if a man wants this woman to stay at home, cook, and clean? Would you do it? <laughs> Is he making millions? I'm joking. <laughs> well, Just he's kidding. providing. Okay, he's providing. Because he wants you to do that. Like, you know what? I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. If the woman wants to. Me personally, could I be at at stay-at-home mom that just cooks and cleans no i couldn't just because it's not my personality i love to be busy i love to be doing stuff but if my if my man told me you don't have to work just stay home take care of the kids like i would love that but just know i'm working on my businesses on the side yeah wait till you start having kids (laughs) no you know what like i just i don't know i just feel like i'm just an active person like i just couldn't but i don't think there's anything wrong with it if that's what some some women you know like that's what they aspire to be yeah life yeah. And there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because, like, you know, back in the days, that's what women were kind of for. Yeah. You know, that to was create the, the family dynamic. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But I also, you know, if the woman chooses to, but, like, don't force her. Some women are yeah. not domestic, you know. I know a few of those. They're, like, very career-driven. They give birth, but then they leave their children to go back into the workforce to get nannies, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. just from my personal experience, because I am expecting a baby in, okay. in December. <laughs> Yes. She, what, you're expecting a what? A little baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little boy, so we're really oh excited. My God, yeah. we're giving away all the secrets. Yes. You're having a baby. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even believe it. I know. I can't believe it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm made for this. I'm made oh. to be a boy mom because I always say I'm the worst at hair makeup. So my daughter would have to teach herself and then teach me. So. Oh my God, I'm so excited yes. for you. Me too, me too. The cat's at the bag. Yeah, no. And I mean, I've been posting pictures of my body and people haven't really caught on yet. I don't really think people have caught on. Yeah, they just think I had a big breakfast, maybe. <laughs> Exclusive. Yes, yes. The first time we're, well, I'm announcing it. But yeah. I mean, whatever. Like, obviously, I'm going to be posting and my stomach's be growing. I mean, it's just a yeah. matter of time before people start to put one and one together. But right. my perspective on this has changed ever since becoming pregnant because I am um, at home and when you're pregnant, like, obviously, you're going through so many bodily changes. Yeah. You're tired. And I'm wanting to work on my business. And I do. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you're just so tired. I just feel like you can't. You take naps. Yeah. I wake up. I want to do things around the house. You know, the dishes. Yeah. And there really doesn't feel like there's enough time in the day. Yeah. So, like, cooking, cleaning. Um, and then on top of that, taking care of a child soon. Yeah. Like, I'm nervous about what that will leave like. for my business, yeah. right? Realistically. Don't worry, I got you, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true, right? Like, uh, I know that it's obviously manageable, but it is really hard to juggle that yeah. work and home lifestyle. I'll still be obviously practicing real estate. It's going to be an adjustment for both of us. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I think, it, it, I don't think it's a bad thing if a man wants the woman to stay at home mm-hmm. cooking clean, especially if he's providing, because... You can't do it all. Right. You really can't. Right. Men make more money anyways. I'm joking. <laughs> no, but it's, it's kind of true. Statistically. Some, yeah, statistically. statistically. 
yeah please save yourself on that one <laughs> that is true statistically they do make more money mm-hmm. and um you know i my i want my man to make more money than me yeah you know and you <laughs> want to have the flexibility obviously yeah. i want to work and make money but i want it to be on my terms versus stress like i need yeah. this money or we're not eating today right you know what i mean so yeah. i do have a newfound appreciation for single moms doing it all girl you ain't got no fresh your man got you <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got no stress no i know yeah i'm pretty stress-free i'm not gonna <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're having a great pregnancy yeah very stress-free yeah this baby's Amazing. gonna come out in five minutes i hope <laughs> okay it's my turn right magda what's your worst habit you know this i think yeah. it's just picking my nails but you know what if it's i've had a nail lady and i don't think she was applying fresh product i think it was old mm. so it always chip away on the sides and then if it's already starting like i'm gonna finish it i but remember like, one time we were picking your nails and i was like <laughs> yeah i remember <laughs> i remember That's for my crazy. birthday <laughs> two years ago i went to a restaurant with my cousins I, actually this was before covid wow time flies it does yeah but i had like fake nails on and i got really drunk and I started biting all of them off. Like, oh I cannot. Gosh. Gross, right? But I cannot leave my nails alone. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's either they're fully nice or yeah. they're coming right off. No, I feel, especially shellac, it, like, comes off so easy. Sometimes I feel. Yeah, shellac is, like, peeling right off. So, mm-hmm. thank God I don't actually, like, work physically because <laughs> this would be a disaster. What a great life. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Elfie. Do you think it's bad to be a sex addict? Interesting question. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. First of all, that just means that you have no discipline. It also means that you can't be trusted. When you're addicted to anything, yeah. it's a stronghold on you that you need to realize and like analyze. Like, why do you have this stronghold? You know, mm-hmm. like what has caused this? And sometimes yeah, it no could be willpower. Sp- no willpower. And sometimes yeah. it could be spiritual attacks on you. And yes. you don't even realize why why can't I stop watching porn or why can't I stop having sex with so many men or so many women? It's like gross. It's awful and like those are soul exchanges and that's a yes. serious issue. If you're struggling with it, I would suggest you find Jesus and read your Bible. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even I'm not even trying to be funny. No, and there's things you can do to mitigate it, like stop watching porn, right? I think it's a soul killer. Yeah, so to and speak. it ruins your relationships. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what you I was going to say. If you are like ejaculating to other women, you don't have that left for your partner. Yeah, so and it's, like, it's not special. No. If you're addicted to sex as a man, I just feel like you're weak. Yeah, 100%. You know? And how can you desensitize yourself yeah. from something that's supposed to be so special? That's you know? so sad. <laughs> and it's also giving go get checked. Oh, yeah, 100%. Magda, please give me some pickup lines that would work. See, I told you guys the audience needs help with dating. Yeah. In terms of pickup lines in general, yeah. I just think they have to be funny. Yeah. You know, but also original mm-hmm. and just like natural and organic in the moment. Like you got to feel the person out because there's a fine line between funny and cheesy. Yeah. Do you have any specific ones that you've heard that to you To be liked? honest, I just like a confident man. Yeah. Like, if you see me, even if I'm in the grocery store, if I'm, I don't know, walking by you, like I'm like, excuse me miss a polite confident man you are so beautiful i would love to take you up to dinner yeah you know are you free next week straight to the point short confident that's it yeah don't give me the long talks keep it short and sweet let me wonder about you yeah you know yeah Yeah, you gotta be confident open direct and that's it yeah because i hate the ones where you get dms like you're so hot or even worse just an emoji yeah or like i don't like when people message me as if they know me you know like if you message me just saying elfie it's like <laughs> do i like what what do i, do I know that? you yeah but yeah. if it's in person you want to keep it short and sweet because you don't know where i'm going you don't know if i'm on a i'm usually running to an appointment or whatever the case is you literally have five seconds yeah so keep it short be confident and be a gentleman yeah well it's a first impression right and absolutely and women typically pick up in the first what like yeah 10 seconds and i love when when guys are like i i don't want to i don't want to take up too much of your time you're showing me that you respect my time because my time is very valuable yeah <laughs> and i'll say like my fiance never used some cheesy pickup lines yeah. guys who use pickup lines i feel like just look at girls as a commodity yes you know and it's like 
a real man doesn't need a pickup line yeah and don't overuse pickup lines like don't yeah. say it to like 10 women hoping that one of them bites because yeah. it's getting desperate okay and trust me i've heard all of them <laughs> <laughs> i've heard a lot of pickup lines and none of them have worked yeah there you go you just gotta show it don't say it exactly describe your dream man <laughs> <laughs> describe my dream man oh he looks so good i'm just <laughs> my- i see him already <laughs> i see him already but my dream man, I would say, okay, physical or like in general? You can give a little bit of both. Okay, so I'd feel like absolutely like non negotiable has to believe in God. And when I say God, I mean like has to be Christian. Like I don't see myself dating a guy who's Muslim yeah. or Buddhist or Jewish. It just, yeah, it just, it just wouldn't work, you know? So definitely believe in God and has to be, a, has to be over six feet. Yeah. You know, I know exactly what I want. I know what I want my future family to look like. I need a man who I can look up to literally. <laughs> I figuratively, you know, I'm like I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but you know, somebody who's very kind, who's a family man that doesn't mind spending time with you and your family, ambitious. Yeah, those are good. Yeah. And I will say religion is a big one and I feel like the more things you have in common, like those mm-hmm. values, the easier it is. Like think of like, these shows like 90 Day Fiance where like this American will go to like Egypt yeah. and she's so like culture shocked by it just you have to be equally yoked. It yeah. Comes down to it. Yeah. And I need a man who's um somewhat into fitness. Yeah, you, know? you gotta take care of yourself. Yeah. Like, when I have fitness. kids, boys, let's go. We going for a run this morning, okay? Oh my god, those boys gonna awesome. hate you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I want to. I want to have a very active family. Yeah, like you know, like we're doing adventures together. Like you know, I just that's yeah. what I see for myself. So that would be my dream man and somebody who you know is very selfless. Yeah, because I feel like I give. I will give a hundred and ten percent. Like I want to take care of my man. In the ways that women should. Mm-hmm. So he has to, you know, give me that same energy back. Yeah. You're going to cook some vegan meals for him? <laughs> Girl, <laughs> you know I'm not a vegan. <laughs> it's just temporary. But yeah, I'm going to definitely cook for my man for sure. Yeah. Better breakfast and everything. Wow. You're better Sorry, than breakfast. me. <laughs> <laughs> I expect that shit. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, like I love cooking desserts. Like I just, yeah. I don't know. I just, no, you're a wifey. stuff is fun, you know? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And I love giving massages. Wow. It's like my favorite thing. Yes. Yeah. And you give great head massages. <laughs> I remember that one time you <laughs> put that oil in my so hair. I was like, <laughs> Okay, we're watching TV. And <laughs> it was not intimate. <laughs> I promise. It sounded so bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a head massage and it was for your beauty oil. Yes. So it's promo, basically. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nothing sexual. Tell him. <laughs> yeah. But no, you're going to be a good wife one day. And yeah. You just got to wait a bit longer and God's got you. And Amen. you're going to make a man really happy one day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Thanks, friend. You're training. You're in training mode right yeah, now. <laughs> That's why I'm so picky because I know I know I'm a great wife. Yeah. I'm and you, wife. you should be picky. You yeah. know? Can't give this energy to anyone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. Magda, <laughs> what is the secret that you kept from your parents? Ooh, I did keep this secret from my dad for the longest time, I have to say, because it's so funny. I told him, I think when I was like 20 years old, Mm -hmm. but basically when I was younger, like I'll say seven years old, my dad always had a wallet in the kitchen and he always had 20s in there. And uh, Sorry, daddy. (laughs) (laughs) We lived on like a cul-de-sac. There was always an ice cream man like coming by and... I always remember like being like, I'm just going to take 20. And this was literally like probably back then. 20 was just a lot of money. A lot. I was buying the neighbors wow. ice cream, like the it's kids. Like, Look at this little rich white girl. Yeah. <laughs> that's why they were friends with me. <laughs> <laughs> this is my thinking. I was like, this is just a loan for my dad. I'm going to give it back to him when I start working, uh... which never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Yoink. But I remember telling my dad this story like years later. It needed to be timed right. Right. Absolutely. The spankings girl. Oh, my God goodness yeah <laughs> my dad will always say like yeah i would look into my wallet and this a hundred dollars missing like you know and Damn he's like girl. he's thinking like did i like misplace it or did yeah. i spend it meanwhile it was just me and also i have another one wow i kept a lot of secrets from my Damn. parents but i remember my dad he loved when his kids want things right yeah. and there is this like it's called a polish slalom which is essentially like a a skiing or snowboarding snowboarding okay. concert uh contest sorry mm-hmm. we all went yeah 
and they like at the end of it they're announcing the winners and they're giving away trophies Mm -hmm. okay so when i was (laughs) when i was 15 years old i stole one of the trophies and i told my dad that i want it okay and i thought he'd just be proud of me but this man went around telling everyone oh. meanwhile oh i just stole that i felt like so bad and my dad was like texting everyone like texting my family, he's like take, take me show me how to snowboard girl well so why i ended up telling him was because the next slalom was coming up and he's like magda you gotta enter again and i'm like i'm not that good <laughs> okay i'm not a snowboard but i'm not amazing and i can just get down the hill but yeah. like a contest yeah right yo that's so funny and so we're, i remember like i went to my dad one time at night and i'm like dad i gotta be honest with you i didn't actually participate in it and he took it well he didn't like yeah. get super mad at me Aww. but it was just to make him proud honestly yeah, that's so cute yeah super cute <laughs> what about you <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> well i hit all of my tattoos i hit yes. all of my piercings yeah piercings for sure so my first boyfriend was a guy I went to prom with. He was mm-hmm. also my mom's best friend's son. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and literally a year ago, my mom was like, um, I'm not going to say the name, but she was like, she told me that um, you and her son dated. This whole you time. You never I, told her? No, I never told her. What? Got, because my mom was so strict. She was crazy. Yeah. And so my mom was like, is this true? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> mind you she was she literally asked me this like last year oh wow. yeah and i was like yeah it is but i the whole time i thought she knew because one time i remember so the whole time i had a boyfriend so i we started dating in grade 12 and we dated all throughout second year of university or third year university second year mm-hmm. long story short i remember i used to go to windsor to see him at the time i went to western university so I remember this one weekend i went to windsor to see him and i don't know for some reason my mom felt like i wasn't at school i wasn't on campus which she was right the mother motherly hunch and i was yeah. freaking out because my mom didn't know i had a boyfriend let alone she didn't know i was going to another city oh my god mind you at this point i'm like 19 so it's like who cares but my mom was so, like i grew up like in a very strict household mm. so i was like i was literally having a panic attack like i was like i told my boyfriend i'm like like should i should you like should i get a uh train back home like i was literally stressing and like um i didn't have a car at this point yet but i remember i was like i never told her a boyfriend yeah even though i was dating her best friend's son oh my gosh Ooh, i know scandalous whatever but, like her best like her best friend which was his mom obviously she like the whole family she didn't knew know. like she didn't i was tell sleeping her? over what kind of best friend is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lena, you gotta rethink those friends yeah. <laughs> anyway so they, they like go way back but yeah. also she was kind of like she knew how strict my mom was so mm. she was like kind of protecting our relationship which was sweet yeah and, you know like our families are still super close till this day but i remember that like even he was like nervous like everybody's like my mom is like not to be played with you mm-hmm. know everyone is like she, they respect my mom she's she demands respect yeah, type yeah, of woman, yeah, you know? Yeah, well, sure. now she's, like, cute and, like, dainty, you know? But yeah. back then, she was, like, oh, my God, like, my dad is coming, like, you know? Oh, like, that's yeah. how people look at my mom. Because yeah. she's just, even at work, like, she's she tells. sergeant. Tell, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She tells people about themselves. Like, my mom is that person that she's very dedicated to yeah. what she does. So, like, don't play with her. Yeah, she's and direct. I, like I get that from her a little bit. But I'm not that bad. No, she's definitely more direct than you. Yeah, <laughs> she's very direct. She'll tell you to your face. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, though. It's a good mom to have. You know what? I think that it's important to have parents that are, uh, you know, there's a fine line. But I think there yeah. should be some rules in place and boundaries. Absolutely. Because you carry that with you yeah. as you grow older. So no shame Look how it turned that. out. <laughs> Angel, angel. <laughs> but yeah, so I hid the, the fact that I even had a boyfriend. Oh, I hid a lot of things, which is not good. Like, I definitely like when I have kids, I want to be more open. Yeah. Because I was kind of scared of my mom, not gonna lie. And I don't want my kids to be scared of me. Yeah. But yeah. definitely, if I look at you, you better know what's good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, I think that your relationship with your parents sets you up to be a better parent yourself. So, absolutely. No shame in the game. Yeah. All right. We're going to ask you one last question. Do you think men are too feminine these yes. days? You know, I just, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Why are we doing. Why are we doing. Mm-mm. In the photos. Mm-mm. Why are we. Why painting our nails? <laughs> like, just too feminine. And, I, and that's one of my biggest pet peeves like if i go on a date with a guy and he gives me feminine energy Mm-mm. it's okay to have a little bit of feminine energy but like the amount of feminine energy that i'm seeing is crazy and it's such a big turnoff for me i don't want to feel like i have to protect my man 
No, it's you a know? turn off. There's limits. Like, I don't yeah. mind if, if a guy cries, for example, if it's warranted. That's if you beautiful. cry about everything, yeah. like, what's wrong with you? Have emotions. Be, <laughs> yes. you know, have, like, be that honest intimacy. And, yeah. and it's okay to show me your emotions, you know, yeah. and to be sad. And or I your love vulnerable that. Side. Yeah. yeah. But don't be doing no girly shit. No. Uh, I think taking selfies and posting them online, uh, yeah. I think it's so girly and... I don't know. It's just not my vibe. I don't like it. Like it's, pretty boy vibes is like, ugh. No, no. And yeah. I think that men are definitely becoming more feminine as time goes on. I don't know what you got, what kind of water you guys are drinking. Yeah. And I don't like when a guy acts like he's so impressed by me, it's kind of a turn off because it's like, desperate. Do you not do this? Yeah. You're a man. You should have this. You should be doing this. Like, yes. If you're looking at me like, wow. You're so driven. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> are you not outside grounding like, yeah like, what you are know? you doing yeah i want to look at my man and be like damn he is i'm looking up to my man you know i don't want you to look like yes be wild by me but but in other ways yeah, yeah. you know yeah I don't, don't know. be excited by the by the male qualities of me you yes. know what i mean yes exactly like that's for you yeah you and to- i'm i'm very independent but i'm not an independent woman don't need a man no 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 i no. so if you're giving me the vibe where you, you like you want me to take care of you? Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. I'm going to take care of me and my mama. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody else. I don't got no room for nobody else. <laughs> okay, my dad. Yes. Last question. So obviously to make it a little spicy. Mm-hmm. This is what the viewers asked. It's not us. Not us. If you met a man and fell in love with him, but found out he had a micro penis, would you break up with him? Ooh. Okay, short answer, yes. That's like a <laughs> no-brainer. And the reason why I say that is because I think that sexual intimacy, it is an important aspect to consider when looking at a long term relationship. If we get stimulated vaginally and I can't feel you, well, then that's not happening. I can't feel you. You feel me? (laughs) (laughs) So I feel bad because obviously they are born that way. It's not like they've asked for it, but... Is that actually a thing, though, micro? It, there, it is a real thing. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's a real thing, and, and men are unfortunately uh, cursed with it sometimes. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself. There might be women out there who are like, I'm definitely okay. not speaking from experience. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no way. <laughs> sometimes you just never know, you know? Oh, no. Some big I things like come you're... in small packages, if you feel me. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I like big D energy. I just feel like if you don't have that intimacy with your partner, like if they're not hitting it right, like you have to be that person for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. that is not good, you will not be satisfied in any other thing. I don't care what anybody else says. Yeah. At the end of the day, like your sex in a relationship is so important. A point of blank, having a micro penis is a no for me. Yeah. I would definitely break up with a guy if you had one. Absolutely. It's not your fault, but I also have to think of my needs and yeah. what I expect from a partner. And especially like, you know, it. especially if, you know, you're a woman that a lot of men desire. There's yeah. no way you're going to be at home with a micro when you know there's so much more out there. I think your partner has to be like your missing puzzle piece in all areas. We're just going to yeah. end that there. Yeah. <laughs> don't take my advice. I'm celibate. Also, you guys, if you don't already know, myself and my dear are both realtors. Yes. We are looking to onboard more buyers, more sellers. We currently have an exclusive listing at 2035 Kennedy Road in mm-hmm. Scarborough. Yeah. Um, it's an exclusive listing, meaning it's on MLS. It's a great corner unit. It's an assignment sale, too. Yeah, assignment yeah. sale. Closing December 2020. 2023. Yeah, 2023, 771 square feet. We will link the information below it's a nice condo it's one of those condos where you don't have to leave yeah you have everything there they have like an indoor playground for your kids they have like a study a library uh, party theater. rooms bar like yeah. chefs so it's pretty it's definitely giving luxury five star yeah it resort. is yeah yeah so it's definitely uh very modern and it's also an area that's very accessible like there's stores all yeah. around they have the ttc there and so. it's a corner unit yeah which is the best yeah it's wrap around balcony it is yes. absolutely stunning if you're curious what it looks like we'll have the information below but send us an email and we can send you all the details um, yeah, yeah all the details yeah awesome well guys thank you so much for sending in your questions if you want more answers to your questions please drop a comment under this video with 
answers. Yeah. Again, if you want more of this, do comment answers in the comment section. Yeah. And Elfie, close us off. It is Meet You at the Top podcast. We will see you there. Meet you at the top. Yeah. Like that Elfie on love. Yeah. And they ain't never gonna stop. Make sure you tune in and watch